He did not come to wage war on the Romans, but to wage war on religion. That cancerous hypocrisy driven by pride, which concluded that the sinner should be shamed. Kingdom. As dawn broke, he arose. Jesus was coming for his kingdom. Coming to save man from sin. Coming to crush the hold of death from within. Coming so man could live with him forever. But man's heart did not desire his saving grace. He came humbly on the unbroken foal of a donkey. As he entered the city, the people rejoiced, but Jesus wept. You see, the crowds didn't want forgiveness and mercy. They desired an earthly victory. They followed Jesus for misguided reasons. They followed his works, but denied the freedom in his words. He came for a spiritual kingdom, not of earth, but the kingdom of heaven. And though legions of angels knelt before him, he did not come to wage war on the Romans, but to wage war on religion. That cancerous hypocrisy driven by pride, which concluded that the sinner should be shamed and excluded. But these very sinners were the purpose of his crucifixion. Make no mistake, Jesus did not die a victim. He was instead the willing sacrifice for our sin. We worship Jesus today, not because of what he may do for us, but because of who he is to us, our King, our Messiah, and our God, who brought his kingdom through a cross, the heavy cross that pointed to a promise, a revelation, that one day will stand with every nation, tribe, and language. Palm branches lifted high, one voice united in a deafening cry. Salvation belongs to our God. Jesus is here. His kingdom is here.
It's time to go to the altar and pray. It's time to go to the altar and pray. Lord, it's time to go to the altar and pray. are carrying the word today. Some are twisting it and they're turning it in so many different ways. They're talking about the way to heaven. Oh, children, there's only one. If you want to see the scripture reading this morning is coming from the 122nd number of Psalms. It reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. To, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palace. For my brethren and companions sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, it is again that a few of your servants come humbly bow before you. God, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of prayer. We come in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. First of all, God, thanking you for another day that thou has allowed us to see. Oh, we thank you that you 
gave us a right mind to come to the house of prayer. And Father God, as we enter into your gates, we enter today with thanksgiving and we enter into your gates with praise today. God, we are grateful because you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We ask you today to forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit to saturate this sanctuary today. And then, God, I pray that you will empower our pastor with the Holy Spirit, with a word that will mend broken hearts, a word that will lift up bow down heads, a word that will break chains, God. Oh, please, uh, give us a word through our pastor. Then we will forever and ever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And thank you, God. Good morning, Greater St. John family, visitors, and friends. We are so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. These are your announcements for this week. Every day from March 1st to 21st of the, mo the month of March, we are in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. To God be the glory for this opportunity. We just thank God for coming together as a church family, bringing our families and our friends together to seek the Lord for 21 days to come together corporately as well as individually to pray to the Father concerning all of our petitions and supplications, but also sacrifice unto the Lord to show him how much we appreciate the relationship that we have been privileged to have. So we say to God be the glory, and we ask that you join us every day from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. on our conference line. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. That number is 1712-832-8330. Access code 760-9730. On Monday evenings at 6.30 p.m., the Greater St. John family joins together with our sister church, the Greater St. Augustine Missionary Baptist Church in the city of Los Angeles. Their pastor is Dr. E. Wayne Gaddis. Join with us on the line as we pray unto the Lord together with one unified front. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., we come together to receive a word from heaven from our pastor, Bishop Gregory B. Payton, 7 p.m. on our conference line as well. On Sunday mornings, join us for Sunday school where we hear from our children as well as our adult classes concerning the lesson for the week. Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. and concludes at 10 a.m. And as we all know, we join together at 11 a.m. to worship together, to praise together, and to receive a mighty word from heaven from Bishop Gregory B. Payton. These are your announcements for the week, and we pray that you govern yourselves accordingly. God bless. Yeah. 
and in the peace of God, which transcends all understandings, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 7. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains quake in their surging. Psalms 46, 1, verse 3. For we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Good morning. Good morning to all my father's children. Good morning to my fellow believers. Good morning to all of you under the sound of my voice. What a mighty God we serve. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, Sister Grace, how can you say that after everything? Have you not seen or heard what's going on in our world today? Have you not lost anyone? Have things not been hard for you? Well, I'm glad you asked. My answer is yes to all of those questions. But God, never mind. Some of y'all just missed it. But God, that was a reason to shout right there. But God means it's not over yet. But God means there is still more to do. But God means our bishop still has more preaching and teaching to do. But God means he is not through with us yet. But God means there's more kingdom building to do. But God means, never mind, I'm not even going to preach about that. I'm going to leave that to the bishop. So right now, wherever you are in this moment, clap your hands and give God some praise. We all know Pastor Payton is a worshiper and he loves to preach. I'm welcoming you to receive this word from the Lord. Bishop, please come share with us the word that God wants us to hear in these uncertain times. Thank you. You are welcome. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful for another Sunday morning fellowship, another gospel call hour. We're grateful that the Lord has allowed us to be on the get up list once again. I'm excited as our church celebrates seven days of prayer and fasting and more what a time we have had in the Lord these past six days so again I tell you God is good and even now he is worthy to be praised we're closing that up we give God praise and honor honor him today. Uh, I honor him on this Sabbath day. And I'm truly grateful that God has given me another chance to share the word of God. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 beginning at the 7th verse. have your Bibles, I'm asking you to open it up with me. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. God is good. Amen. He is worthy to be praised. The Bible reads, but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, Amen. that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain 
to the resurrection from the dead. May God have a blessing among the reading and hearers of his holy word. I want to talk about this morning. I want an intimate relationship. I want an intimate relationship. The author of this book, and no doubt the Apostle Paul, he wrote this book to all the Christians at Philippi. He wrote this book to the believers everywhere. And the purpose was to thank the Philippians for the gift that they had sent him and to strengthen them by showing them that true joy comes from Jesus Christ alone. Paul urges the church to have Christian unity and to have joy. Paul was letting them know that the unity among Christians can be broken because of the joy that is lacking in the church house. Every time you turn around, somebody, someone is upset because they have lost a loved one or they don't have any money or they've been lied on talked about, mistreated. But in spite of all those things, I still submit to you believers that you should have joy in spite of your situation. You ought to have joy in suffering. Why? Because the Bible says that the suffering of this old world cannot be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, if I'm not talking the Bible, you don't say nothing. But if you know a little Bible, you ought to have joy in serving him. You ought to have joy in serving in the house of the Lord. You ought to have joy in believing. You, you ought to have joy in giving your all and all, even if you don't have much. Why? Because the Bible declares to give. And it shall be given unto you good measures. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Uh, Y'all mighty quiet. Y'all look at somebody and tell them you got to have joy in the midst of your trials and tribulations. Look at Paul and Silas. They were locked up in jail. Backs were bleeding with souls, but in spite of them getting locked up, in spite of them uh, being bruised, in spite of them being hurt, they still had a mind to give God praise. And they gave God praise late in the midnight hour. They took joy in being locked up for Jesus. Oh, but late in the midnight hour, while they were singing praises, the jailhouse began to rock. And the gates' cells flew open. So that let me know that late in the midnight hour, God can still work in my favor. Uh, you'll look at somebody, I know I'm trying to get you to realize that it's a blessing to be here. Look at somebody and tell them late in the midnight, God's going to turn it around and it's going to work in your favor. You ain't said nothing, so I'll preach to myself. 
So I've come this morning on March the 7th, the first Sunday in the third month of 2021. I come to serve notice on you that you got to learn how to open your mouth and bless God in spite of what you're going through. Let me talk to the angels up there. You got to learn in spite of what you're going through that you're going to have to open this mouth, help me somebody, and bless God in spite of the pandemic. Let me talk to the walls on the murals. You're going to have to open your mouth, help me, and bless God in spite of the virus. Yes, yes. Uh, and once you learn how uh, to offer up a sacrifice of praise in spite of your big dilemma, in spite of your big situation, in spite of your setbacks, that's when God will bless you more. There's a saying uh, that says when praises go up, blessings come down but I won't change that and say when praises go up the blessor comes down because some of us only praise when we feel it but I stop by to let you know that your feeling may never come see I don't shout because I feel saved I shout because I know I'm saved. Oh, y'all a tough crowd, but I'm going to get through this anyway. Uh, I, I, I don't shout because I feel delivered. I shout because I know I'm delivered. I, I don't shout because I feel like he's going to uh, bring me out. I shout because I know he gonna bring me out I don't shout because I feel healed I shout because I know I'm healed you ought to reach over don't touch them just look at them and tell them you got to know uh, so so in the book of Philippians Paul has considered everything which he had accomplished in his life. All of that was worthless when it comes to the knowledge of knowing Christ. Look here at what Paul was saying. He said, yes, I had a legitimate birth. Yes, I was circumcised on the eighth day an Israelite from the elite tribe of Benjamin a strict and devout uh, adherent to God's law I was a fiery uh, defendant of the purity of my religion even to the point of persecuting God's people but these things that everybody else waves around like it's something special, the things I used to take credit for, the things I once thought was so important to me, I no longer take credit for it. I, I count it dung. I count it as rubbish. Why? Because there is a new agenda in my life which is Christ Paul said I, I count it lost compared to the high privilege of just knowing Christ yes I, I gave it up so that I could know Jesus personally uh, to experience his resurrection power he he, 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 he's a partner in his suffering and, and go all the way with him to death itself. You see, Paul was letting them know that it's time out for membership with Christ, but now is the time for the saints 
to start having an intimate relationship with Christ. Yeah, y'all don't hear me. Look at somebody one more time and tell them it's time out for membership. Uh, but it's time for an intimate relationship. You see, Paul gave up everything and just to follow Christ. And that's the problem today. Some of, uh, some of us are not willing to give up our worldly uh, possessions to follow Jesus. And uh, we don't want to give up nothing to have an intimate relationship with Christ. Preachers are preaching about Christ, but they really don't have a relationship. Musicians are playing for the Lord, but they really don't have a relationship. Singers are musically spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they really don't have a relationship. We get happy and we dance around the sanctuary, but do we really have a relationship? Pastors are pastoring the sheep, but do they really, I mean, really have a relationship? But I've made up my mind that I'm going to find myself having an intimate relationship with Christ. I have to close now. I know you because y'all don't feel like having church. You you too quiet. I feel like I'm at Fouché's. Uh, I, I got to close, but I before I close, Ames, I'm, I'm going to celebrate by myself. But I'm going to celebrate by reminding you dead folk that there are some advantages in knowing Christ. There are some benefits and there are some blessings in just knowing Christ. You see, when you know him and in the power of his resurrection, you'll find out that Jesus is your light and your salvation. I'm out of here. When you, when you get to know him, you'll find out that the Lord is the strength of my life and, and whom shall I be afraid? When you get to know him, you'll find out that the Lord is your shepherd. And you shall not want when you get to know him and the power of his resurrection. You'll also know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Y'all rushing me out of here. You, you'll find out that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. You'll find out, I, I tell you, you got to be in the word. You'll find out that if God be for you, then who, yeah, can be against you? When, yeah, you get to know him for yourself, you'll find out that nay, in all these things, you are more than conquerors through him that love us. Have you read your Bible lately? You ought to tell somebody I'm more than a conqueror. When you get to know him, I'm, I'm celebrating now. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. When you know him, you'll find out that nothing can separate you from the love of God. When you know him for yourself, you'll find out that weeping may endure for night, but joy, I wish I had some help. 
is coming in the morning when you get to know him child of God that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard neither has it in it I love God's word into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love them if you really loved him you would be saying something I'm talking about if you really is seeking an intimate relationship God ain't just looking at folk who talk about him but he's looking at folk who want to be about him the folk that will trust him even when it don't make no sense we in 21 days of prayer and I heard the prayers of the righteous this week I heard sister Edna say she put down a pain pills she ain't heard she ain't felt nothing ever since she been praying and ever since she petitioned to get close to God I heard sister Irma tell us she was left for dead the doctor told her I was there said that she won't make it through the night but I stopped by to tell you that was January 2020 but this morning I said early this morning Irma was on the line telling us about a man who is able I feel like having church and when you get to know him you'll find out that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you can ask has anybody ever prayed to him have you ever asked him for something didn't he do it I said didn't he do it is there anybody up in here ever asked him for healing did he send a healing angel have you ever asked him to provide for you family did he make a way out of no way when man shut the door didn't God open the door you ought to say something to David said I bless the Lord at all times is there anybody that got a praise up in here is there anybody that's listening to me that say I got a testimony I got a testimony that I got a testimony you ought to say something to you ought to wave your hands if you really know him and above all that you can ask but not only that you ought to be able to tell somebody in Jude he said he's able to keep you from falling anybody read that to keep you from falling and to present you faultless good God almighty before the presence of his glory I'm trying to get in his presence y'all I'm trying to meet my Jesus is there anybody that the Lord has laid his hands on you you ought to say something if he laid his hands on you when you get to know him in a real way he'll touch you yes he will he'll touch you with a finger of love when you get to know him you'll find out child of God that no weapon I wish I had some help that's been formed against me shall prosper and that's why Paul said Lord Lord, I want to know you, Lord, by any means 
necessary if I got to get cleaned up if I got to let it or let her or let him or let them go I want to know you can I get one witness shake some no don't shake their hand point to them and say I want to know the Lord in every way I just don't want to know him as a heart fixer but I want to know him as a mind regulator I want to know him as a doctor in the sick room I want to know him as a lawyer in the courtroom I done got happy y'all y'all just sit there I can testify I want to know him as the judge and not only the judge but I want to know him as the jury do I have any witnesses I want to know him as a banker but I want to know him as a keeper I want to know him as a bridge over troubled water but even if I'm in the water I want to know him as a lifesaver I wish I had some help I wish I had two or three that will touch and agree with this old tired preacher and say I want to know him too I want to know him intimately can I get one witness I had somebody say I want to know him as a burden bearer I wish I had some witnesses, but I want to know him as a company keeper. Have you ever been lonely? Have you ever felt like you've been laid to the side? But then God show up, won't he show up? I heard Edna said he was my medicine in the sick room. I wish I had some help. I want to know him when I'm hungry, but I want to know him as water when I'm thirsty but praise God I know I got some scholars that's listening to me I want to know him as Jehovah Jireh I want to know him as Jehovah Nietzsche I want to know him as Jehovah Sekuna I want to know him as Jehovah El Shaddai I want to know him as Jehovah Shalom I want to know him as Jehovah Shammah I want to know him as Jehovah Roha but I want to know him as Jehovah Macadism as being alright ain't he alright I want to know him as being excellent I want to know him as a wing maker I want to know him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel I want to know him as a provider I want to know him as being a protector somebody shout with me and say protection I want to know him as a God of grace but I need to know him as a God of mercy as a God of power I need to know him as a God of faithfulness you need to look at three people and tell them you better get to know him you better get to know him because one of these old days I'm going to have to lay before this altar can I get one witness I'm going to have to lay here and judgment is going to come after death does anybody know that and I got to stand before the almighty God and give an account of my stewardship as pastor of this great church and that's why I tell him today clean me up from the balls of my feet to the ground of my hand. Can I get one witness? Wash me. Clean my hands. Wash my eyes that I may see what you're doing. Cleanse my ears that I might hear your voice. Walk with me. Talk with me. I cannot get over this. You need to get to know him. Now I understand why Paul said I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, Latchison, Paul was saying I press to know. I press 
press to get to know him. I press to get in his presence. I press to get in his will. I press to feel his anointing. I press to feel his power. I press to feel the Holy Ghost. I press to feel a touch from the Lord. I press to feel his glory. I press to get in the secret place of the almighty God. I press beyond my circumstances. I press beyond my past. I can't look because the past is the past and God ain't concerned of what I used to be but I'm thank God he's concerned to where I'm going. People don't know what you're going through. They don't know that you're in the press in spite of your circumstances, in spite of your situation. There's a longing in my spirit that's saying oh, to be like Jesus. It's in my spirit to be like Jesus, to find yourself like David in the 42nd number of song he said just as the deer panted after the waters so does my heart pant after thee and I look up the word panic and the word panic means to feel a strong desire to yearn eagerly with a yearn to thirst to hunger and I want to know is there anybody up in here that's yearning after Christ is there anybody that's thirsting for the almighty God is there anybody that's hungering for his righteousness walk like him I want to talk like him I want to live like him I want to be like him I want to love like him I want to heal like him I want to preach like him I want to pray like him I heard a song say just to be close so you are my desire not only that but my desire is to please him do I have any witnesses whatever I do I want to please him everything I do I want to please him when I walk I want to please him when I serve I want to please him when I preach I want to please him one thing that I have desire of the Lord Almighty that will I seek after that that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple you see David knew that there was something about dwelling in the tabernacle and that's why I say I was glad when they said unto me let us y'all ain't hear me let us go into the house of the Lord but not only that that's why David also said cast me not away from thy presence because he knew that there was something about being in the presence of the king it's something about being in the presence of the Lord when I'm in his presence I feel better when I'm in his presence I got joy when I'm in his presence there's healing when I'm in his presence there's strength what a privilege just to know him what a privilege to be in his presence he's king of kings he's lord of lords he's a way maker he's I wish I had he's a hope he's my joy he's my peace he's my mama he's my daddy he's my big brother he's my friend he's my hope I come by to tell you I'm glad I know him and if you know him it ought to be a radical praise up in here you ought to be tearing up something telling somebody I'm glad I know him I'm glad I know him tell a living 
living room up. Take your house up. Tell everybody, I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I know him. I don't hear you. Tell somebody, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. You ain't doing nothing. Tell somebody, he'll put a run in in your feet he'll put clapping in your hands he'll put joy in your mouth tell somebody tell somebody he's good 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 Good to know him. Yes. That I may know him. Yes. There's power yes, sir. In, in having an intimate relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. I don't know about you. Yes. Fasting and praying yes. ain't no joke to me. It ain't no plaything. I've been talking to God every day, telling him to clean me up. Wash me. Wash me thoroughly, creating me a clean heart. Restore back unto me the joy. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. wondering why I can't stay in a good relationship. Why I can't find the job that makes me feel good. But I tell you, if you get close to God, he'll make a way out of no way. Maybe it's not your, the will of God for you to be rich. But God didn't say you have to be poor either. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. But you got to know him first. You got to be in relationship with him. And maybe somebody here don't know him in the pardon of your sins. Come to declare and decree that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to any man or woman. If you want your life change, get in relationship with Jesus. He's real child of God. I heard the testimonies on the prayer line. I heard the prayers of the righteous. And I was encouraged by the testimonies that when you pray, he will answer. I said he will answer. You'll begin to see signs and wonders. And I tell you, I tell you, God never lied. When he said, I'll be with you, even until the end of the world, that's a promise. He said, I'll never forsake you, help me somebody, nor leave you, that's a promise. Even in the midst of bad circumstances with Joseph, he, the Bible said, and God <laughs> was with Joseph. Hallelujah. And it's good when you're in relationship. You know his presence. You feel him. I don't know about you. I feel his presence even when it appears that things are sinking. I know.
know somehow, some way, God going to pick me up. God's getting ready to turn it around. Ain't nothing like God's favor. I said it ain't nothing like God's favor. <laughs> some say you didn't deserve it, but that ain't what God's favor said. Glory to God. I'm out of here, y'all. I know I talk too much. But God sent me to encourage somebody. I said, God sent me with a word for somebody. And this word was for you today. You ought to bless God that he lets you get on the get up list. That he gave you a mind to hear and to listen. Thank you, God, for the word today. Come to Jesus while the blood runs warm in your veins. Take up his cross and not follow Peyton. Don't follow a preacher, but follow Christ. He's able to guide, lead you, and direct you. You can call the church right now. We'll be glad to share the plan of salvation. You can join me on Wednesday night. Word on Wednesday. 7 o'clock on our prayer line. I'd be glad to encourage you and share with you. Let me say to you, St. John, don't get complacent. It ain't over. This pandemic is not over. Some folk are opening up, but it don't mean that it's over. It's not, it don't mean that you stop wearing a mask. It don't mean that you stop washing your hands and being careful of being close up to people. And young people, I know it's the spring break. Don't you just think it's party time? Let me tell you what time it is. It's death time. And don't play with your soul. And don't play with your health and your life. This virus is dangerous. And it's real. But I know somebody who was able to protect you. I tell you, he brought us through 2020. And here I am three months into 2021. I'm still here. Glory to God. That ought to be somebody's testimony. And you ought not be scared to say it. Tell somebody I'm still here not because of my goodness, not because of I've done anything great. I'm here because of the grace, y'all ain't hearing me, and the mercies of God. Yeah. <laughs> that's good news. I said that's good news. I'm going to close. I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to serve the communion and I'm out of here. First, we're going to take our offering. I want to share our gifts. And I have mine. And I want to share my tithe and my offering. I want you to do the same thing, Greater St. John. Please don't let up. It's the wrong time to let up. You share your tithes and your offerings. Please, people of God. We have to stay on top of the hill. We must do not what Peyton said, what the word said. He said, you give as the Lord has prospered you. He says to also pay your tithe. And don't be a robber and God has blessed you immensely and you don't share a tenth back. That money does not belong to you. It belongs to God. So we're going to share our tithe. Let's do that very quickly, officers that's in here and those who are listening to me. You've got ways to give through Givelify, through Cash App, and also you can mail it and you can also drop it off of the church. We're here for several hours today. You can bring your offering. We usually share. I got $50 to share today in my offering, but you ought to share a gift. I wouldn't look at me and don't give. I wouldn't get excited off God's word and don't give. Shame on you. Shame on you. You knew we a Baptist preacher that when I got on the line there was going to be an offering. 
If anybody been to church more than two Sundays, they know that we're going to lift an offering. Amen. Sister Cherie, can you give me my tights and my offering? Hand me that. My tithe. My tithe belongs to the Lord, not to me. Amen. This tithe belongs to the Lord. And this gift, this offering, and how the Lord has blessed my life immensely, that's how I give. As the Lord has blessed my life. And let me tell you something. I don't give looking for something back in return. Here's my tithe and my offering. I give because the Lord has told me to do it. And I'm being obedient to the word of God. And let me tell you, I'm a living witness. Look at me. Favor looks good on me. Because the fact is that I have been obedient to the word of God. And obedience brings upon blessings. So people of God, don't you sit on there and just shout on credit. I want to be a giver. The Lord will surely bless you for sharing. We prepare now for our communion virtually. And I oftentimes say to all of you, we give and we share people of God. And that gift and that sacrifice, I hope that it has been sanctified and prayed over. Sanctification means to set apart. I hope that you have set it aside. Don't put it in there with them old greens and yams. An old milk carton. It ought to be set aside. With them stale Cheerios that you had yesterday morning. Don't put it next to that. Put it somewhere. It's holy unto the Lord. Y'all laughing, but I'm telling the truth. It's holy unto the Lord. It should be set aside. So I hope and pray, people of God, you have that. You say, well, Rev, I don't have my communion cracker or my drink you can set aside that water that juice whatever drink you have set aside and prayed over it will be used as an example of the sacrifice the bread representing his body our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ the drink representing the blood that was shed Calvary's cross. Let us get serious right now. Let us all get serious. We are in the presence of the Lord. And this is so important. The Lord's table. And I have been praying and asking God's presence on this communion. I'm going to ask the preachers to come and to scripture and to pray over again over this table and this sacrament. So people of God, preachers come. To the pastor and to the church, scripture will be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which also was delivered to me, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this, is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 
For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus the Christ, thanking you, God, for this great invitation to come to your supper. We thank you, God, because of what it signifies, the sacrifice that Jesus did on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. And we just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us because we were filthy, we were nasty, we were dirty, and you cleaned us up. Thank you. Now forgive us, we pray, of all of our sins. We pray that you will bless the contents on the table. Let it be used for what it is for. Oh God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen and thank you, God. People of God, that what you have in your hands is holy unto the Lord. It is holy. Come in. It is holy unto the Lord. I hope and pray that you have prayed over it. And now, people of God, the Bible says he or she that eat or drink unworthily, they eat and drink damnation to their soul. Bless his holy name that God sent Jesus as the perfect gift when I wasn't fit to live or to die, wasn't fit to even for God to look upon me, he sent his only begotten son, that was Jesus. Praise God. And because he died, that blood covered my nasty sins. So I'm going to give all of you in this sanctuary an opportunity and on this broadcast to pray. Let us pause now. Now, when you want you to pray personally before we eat and we drink. Thank you, God. Thank you for the sacrifice and the gift. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for all of our sins. Forgive us. Please, sir, God. I know you're able. I know you're able. Thank you, God. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. And all of God's people said amen. I just wish it was just one praise left up in this building. I wish it was one more left in this broadcast. Maybe you're listening to me. It ought to be a praise in your home right now. Why? Because he died. Why? Because the blood sheds. It, it ought to be a praise in your house. Your children ought to see you praising him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. The Bible said he went into the upper room with the 12 disciples. And they broke bread. This represents his body. And bruised and broken for our iniquity. This drink represents the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. They gave thanks. Thank you, God. Now, people of God, together, let us eat and drink together.
down at the cross where my Savior oh, down and from there to my heart was a blood <laughs> singing read to maybe you didn't know that when I'm closing at the cross at the cross where I and the burdens it was there I received and now God bless you all we thank God for you today we pray that this word has been a blessing to your life we encourage you on tomorrow morning we will be meeting at 6 a.m. for our eighth day of prayer and fasting. I hope Greater St. John, maybe you haven't been on the line. You still have time. We have been praying for you. We have been praying for everybody. I'm praying that the Lord will send a healing throughout the land. And the word of God has given us the prescription. It says prescription and that is if my people Call by my name would humble themselves, what? And pray. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Help me somebody. Then we'll hear from heaven. Not only that, he'll forgive us of our sins and heal the land. So bless his wonderful and awesome name today. We look forward to hearing you tomorrow morning and every morning as we continue in 21 days of fasting and praying. I am praying for you, Sister Carolyn Smith, and praying for you, and praying also for you, Sister Johnny and Sister Lizzie. We are praying for you. We're praying for you, Sister Irma. Just love that prayer. Sister, <coughs> Sister Etna, I'm praying for you. What a mighty, awesome God. I'm praying for you, Shema brought next, Kenya brought next, Praying for you, Demaya. Praying for you, Auntie Ruby. We know sometimes grief is tough. And some folk deal with grief differently. We're praying your strength that even in those quiet, silent hours, and sometimes they suffer silently. But God knows. I said God knows. And I encourage all of you that he cares for you. God bless you and may God keep you. We thank you for joining us this Sunday on our YouTube and our Facebook station. We pray that this word and the songs and the praise was a blessing to you today. And we look forward to seeing you on next Sunday if it be the Lord's will. Again, World Vision, we are continuing our food distribution every Tuesday from 12 to 1 in our back lot. You need to call us 510-834-2094 to register your name that you might get a box of food, a bag of um, uh, emergency essentials, and also a box of produce. Again, we thank God for you. And I tell you, you need to come early on Tuesday. We usually run out in about 40 minutes. And so I'm saying to you, you need to come early between 12 and 1 to receive the blessings from the Lord. God bless you. See you on next Sunday. Let us stand as we do our benediction. And now may the grace of God the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, the love of God, let it rest, rule, and abide with us all, henceforth and forevermore. Let the people of God shout together, Amen. Amen.
We thank you for joining us this week here at Greater St. John. Tune in next week where we again will be broadcasting live via Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget our weekly services which will be displayed at the beginning and the end of this broadcast. Remember God is still on the throne. So be encouraged. Until we meet again, God bless you.